Have you ever wanted a Blue Yeti, but with X in the name? They already had a Blue Yeti Pro, so I guess the only way to go was from there was X, I guess? Blue gon' give it to you. They gon' give it to you. Blue gon' give it to you. This is the Blue Yeti X, Blue's new flagship USB condenser microphone. It's about time that I reviewed it too, because it's been out a while, but my first microphone review in a while. We're going to get right into it after a word from this video's sponsor. Did you miss the Nerd or Die summer sale, but you still want a discount on some of the best and most customizable graphics for your stream, including alerts, overlays, transitions, and an easy one-click setup? Well, the first 100 of you to use coupon code EV50 can save 50%. It's the gift that keeps on giving, as it works on bundles as well. That's EV50 at checkout over at eposvox.gg slash nerd or die. You're welcome. I'm Meeples Vox, your stream professor, and this is the Blue Yeti X. This is Blue's new leading Yeti USB condenser microphone. It is $169, which for a Blue USB mic, I honestly expected it to be more. But when you compare it to the pricing of, say, Elgato's Wave microphones that just came out this year, it's quite the battle there. We'll be talking about how those compare and how they sound different and things like that in a little bit. Uh, but looking at the body itself, it's made of some very durable metal and things like that, like you would expect. The original Blue Yeti and the Yeti Pro were both built like a tank. You've got a big, heavy stand. You've got micro USB connectivity, which is a little disappointing. Would much prefer USB Type-C. And then you have an adapter mount so you can start converting it to a microphone arm, but you can't screw a microphone arm directly into this. You need extra adapter arms and stuff, which come in the box, but I don't have with me on hand. Uh, it's fully adjustable in terms of position. Around front, you have a dial that you click in to mute the microphone. So here's the usual ka-chunk. So you can kind of hear there whether it does the... There's, there's usually a lot of handling noise muting the blue microphone. And then around back, you actually have a button to switch pickup patterns. There's the figure eight pickup pattern for interview mode. There's the omnidirectional mode. There's the stereo mode. And then there is the cardioid mode, which is what I'm going to focus on here. I actually, I had tweeted on Twitter asking, uh, obviously that's what you do on Twitter. <laughs> I posted on Twitter asking if anyone actually used these alternate modes on their USB microphones. And most people either never really realized their microphones had them whenever they had USB microphones or never really found a use but there were some people who said like yeah nine times out of ten I'm not using that but it did come in handy in XYZ scenario so if that's worth it to you there you go but that usually adds the extra cost and potential shortcuts made in order to make these kinds of microphones work in terms of specs it has a 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz frequency response of course it has a new blue well it has four of them <laughs> blue proprietary uh 14 millimeter condenser capsules inside has a max uh, SPL of 122 decibels and the entire package with the sand weighs 2.8 pounds it is a heavy beast it of course does have a headphone out as well so those are the specs in the microphone itself and you have been hearing it on one of the preset settings and we're going to switch over to their software because this actually comes packaged with blue sherpa software it's quite the name uh, that allows you to do a lot with this microphone it doesn't let you do the same stuff as elgato software does but it lets you do stuff that elgato software doesn't so this is the Blue Sherpa app. This is what you download on its own. It's a standalone app or it comes integrated into the Logitech G Hub software. I didn't have issues with G Hub, so I try to avoid it, but the app itself is standalone here. Here you can update the microphone's firmware. You can change the individual settings for the entire microphone. So for example, I can change the polar pattern. I can change the gain and I can even open the control panel to change the actual format of the microphone headphone level, monitoring balance, all of that. And since everything on the microphone itself in terms of controls is software based, uh, everything you change here is going to match up both to the microphone settings directly on the microphone, as well as the Windows sound control panel settings. That way there's no mixing up your settings, you know, having the gain set real low in Windows, but real high here or messing anything up in that regard. So that's pretty handy. You can come over here where it says enable blue voice. And now you get an entire suite of controls for post-processing on your microphone. And it even has a little handy tool to record a sample with the current settings, play it back, keep looping it to you, and then adjust from there. And it has a bunch of different presets here. These are the ones that come with it. You can, of course, create your own, and you can probably download some from others because you have a filter option, which implies you can have a lot set up here. Um, it has the master output level, which all of these have a really low output level for some reason. So I went ahead and cranked them all up so you can actually hear me and then we'll go through the settings. So first of all, let's run through the presets. By default here, I've been on the low voice loud. Uh, I think it's 
the most uh, flattering to my voice that people are least likely to complain about. I actually like a couple others, but they tend to be a little more boomy and people complain about the boominess. But we'll run through here. First and foremost, we have the AM radio setting. I'm not sure who's recording AM radio with the Blue Yeti X, but if you like the sound of AM radio, this one might be for you. Then we have Broadcaster 1. Broadcaster 1's a little bit more boomy, a little bit more, you know, typical podcast radio style. And then we have Broadcaster 2, which in my testing seemed to be even a little bit more boomy than that. I actually really like the sound out of this. But like I said, with my voice, it does create a bit of boominess. And I do think people would complain about that just based on the weird complaints about boominess and then lack of boominess that I inconsistently get across all of my videos. And then we have classic radio voice, if you want the classic radio sound, I suppose, WVOX. And then we have crisp and modern. That's crisp and modern sound. And then we have the flat profile, the flat profile. And then we have two profiles, soft and loud for high pitch voices. This is high voice loud. This is high voice soft. And this really just kind of changes the compressor and the gate settings. Kind of weird. And then we have the same thing for loud or for low voices. So this is low voice loud. This is low voice soft. And then lastly, but not leastly, we have warm and vintage. Kicking back over here to Broadcaster 2 for a second, you can see here in these settings, you actually have control over pretty much everything. Now, this is running on software. It's not running on the actual microphone itself, so it will use CPU cycles for it, but I cannot possibly imagine this actually causing any significant added CPU load or anything like that on all, but like the lowest end, the oldest machines used for streaming or something like that. So you initially have a three band EQ here that you can customize as you wish. But if you click the three dots, then you can adjust which frequencies are being affected as well as the width of the effect on it. So by default, it's one or two octaves, but you can go from there. I don't think octaves was the right word there, but that's fine. Under noise reduction, you have more filters or more settings for the noise reduction filter. More settings for the expander and gate. More settings for the de -esser in case you need to find your specific frequency. Compressor settings, threshold, ratio, all of that, as you would expect. And then limiter settings as well. So lots of settings available here. And if you don't want any of this for some reason, you can just click enable blue voice and turn it off. And now we're back with the raw sound of the microphone, although it's running a little hot here. So hopefully I did not peak just now. But there you go. That is the raw sound. We're going to go ahead and turn that back on. And I will go back to let's do classic radio voice. So that is the blue Sherpa software. You have a little bit more settings here for like updates and things like that. But it's pretty handy that this comes with the microphone. My only concern here, though, is that in terms of like microphone value and what you're actually getting for your money, this offers the post-production processing, post-processing stuff that I complained about Elgato's Wave software, Wavelink, not actually having. But Elgato's Wavelink software gives you all of the virtual mixing and virtual audio devices and all of that that no other microphone really comes with. And Blues definitely doesn't. So in terms of added value, given that you can use VSTs in OBS and things like that, I would almost argue that the Wave microphone comes with the most valuable software, you know, between these two microphones, especially if they add the post-processing. Because if you're just looking for post-processing, the Blue Yeti X probably is the way to go because it has all of those options built in. You don't have to download anything else, learn VST filters, anything like that. But that's just one little limitation that Elgato had teased was coming to the Elgato Wavelink app at one point. They had told me they hope they can do it, but no confirmation that it was happening. Supposedly, they told Harris Heller it was actually happening. So one way or the other, if they introduce that into the Wavelink software, it's really hard to argue the value of this microphone over the Blue Wave microphones in that regard. Overall, I think this microphone sounds pretty good. For a USB condenser microphone, it sounds fairly solid. Like I am impressed with the sound of it, assuming you're using it in the right way, which we'll talk about in a little bit. The sound is pretty nice. But again, I am leveraging the presets and the software here because I don't think most people should be using just purely the raw audio out of a microphone for live streaming or content creation, unless you're sending raw voiceover samples to then be processed by someone else. That being said, the raw audio is important to keep in mind as a base point for processing. So let's flip over to my raw sample comparison to the Aver Media mic, the Elgato mic, and the HyperX Quadcast real quick. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne, in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. So in my Elgato Wave review, where I had all of these raw samples compare, compared, I felt like the Yeti X's 
audio felt a little too muddy. Like there was extra low end there, but it it wasn't flattering low end IMO and it lacks some clarity in the high end in the raw audio versus the Elgato Wave and the HyperX Quadcast. But a lot of people preferred that extra emphasis on the audio compared to the flatter profile of the Elgato Wave. So it's definitely up to you. And of course, like I said, everything you can tweak in EQ and pretty much convert any microphone into another in many regards in terms of the actual like EQ and muddiness and all of that. Obviously, you want the best possible starting place, but whatever. Uh, let's talk about noise rejection here for a moment. We're going to pull up the white noise test, and I'm going to do this first with that um, classic radio already applied here as that has a noise gate, and you can see how that works. And then we'll run it without the noise gate. So you can see how it sounds normally for noise rejection. Pulling up my usual white noise sample here. So this is like a little less than half volume. Actually, half volume on my phone. Pointed at the microphone, so straight on at the microphone. Coming around the right side of the microphone. Coming around the back of the microphone. Coming around the left side of the microphone. Up above the microphone down below the microphone, and now back in front. And again, that was with the blue voice settings enabled, so I'm just gonna turn that off entirely. Now we're running on the raw microphone audio, and I'm playing this pointed at the microphone. Coming around the right side of the microphone. Now completely behind the microphone. Left side of the microphone. Up above the microphone, and back in front. Now we're going to do our typing test. Unfortunately, I have moved sets into a completely different setup, so I no longer have Cherry MX blue switches that I usually have, but this is a Cherry black equivalent. So I'm going to be, and this is with the noise gate turned off, I'm going to be typing while talking, talking while typing, tippity tap, tap, tip, tip, tap, zippity zap, zap, and I'm going to do some clicks and some clicks and some clicks, and there you go. The microphone is in front of it. Now all of these tests have been done with the microphone. Well, let's I'm gonna use crisp and modern now. So all of these tests have been done with the microphone in correct positioning and use mostly appropriately. I would prefer to have it up off the desk on an arm and kind of closer to you, what have you, with a pop filter maybe. But generally speaking, these are my best practices for microphone usage in terms of making sure that you have it up close to your mouth, you don't have it way far away, you don't have the gain cranked up or whatever. But what a lot of people tend to do with the original Yeti is use it wrong and then it sounds horrible. So I'm gonna give you an example of that because you heard what it sounds normally. I'm gonna set it all the way across my desk here. It is now basically up against the monitor. Now I'm gonna to have to talk louder to compensate for that and crank up gain. And we're also gonna do a typing test real quick here, talking while typing. Now the keyboard is in front of the microphone. So if you're game streaming like this, not only do you have to talk louder, you're gonna pick up more reflections off your monitors and your whatever's on your desk. And the keyboard's now in front of the mic capsule, picking up more of that sound. I have an entire video dedicated to the physics of Microphone usage, I have that linked in the video description. Go check that out because you don't want to be that person with your Yeti. So that's it. That's the Blue Yeti X. I am for $169. It's not a bad microphone. It's pretty solid. It beats out the older Yetis and things like that as long as you are using it appropriately. I'm glad I finally got to review this. I am actually impressed with what it is. So congrats, Blue. You made another solid microphone that hopefully people will use appropriately this time. Uh, but in terms of value, I don't know if you can justify the extra 30 bucks or up to 50 bucks over the cost of Elgato's microphone, especially with that cool voice meter like software that it comes with. So the choice is yours, of course. I just want to provide all of these samples to you so you can make the right decision for you. Ultimately, good audio practices like I talked about matter a lot more, as well as just generally making entertaining content, not obsessing over the gear that you have. But I want to make this content so you can pick the best possible gear for you. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more streaming education and tech education. I'm your host, Epos Vox. Go check me out on Twitter. Uh, join us on Discord, eposvox.gg slash Discord to come chat about microphones, get help with your setup, learn more about streaming or just nerd culture in general. And go check us out on Floatplane for early access to videos and behind the scenes content. I said that totally wrong. See you later.